the pectoral girdle. The appendicular skeleton includes all of the limb bones, plus the bones that unite each limb with the axial skeleton. The bones that attach each upper limb to the axial skeleton form the pectoral girdle. This consists of two bones, the scapula and the clavicle. The clavicle, or collarbone, is an S-shaped bone located on the anterior side of the shoulder. It is attached on its medial end to the sternum of the thoracic cage. The lateral end of the clavicle articulates or joins with the scapula just above the shoulder joint. The scapula, or shoulder blade, lies on the posterior aspect of the shoulder. It is supported by the clavicle and articulates with the humerus to form the shoulder joint. The scapula is a flat, triangular-shaped bone with a prominent ridge running across its posterior surface. This ridge extends out laterally, where it forms the bony tip of the shoulder and joins with the lateral end of the clavicle. The clavicle of each pectoral girdle is anchored to the axial skeleton by a single, highly mobile joint. This allows for the extensive mobility of the entire pectoral girdle, which in turn enhances movements of the shoulder and upper limb. The clavicle has three regions, the medial end, the lateral end, and the shaft. The medial end, known as the sternal end of the clavicle, has a triangular shape and articulates with the manubrium portion of the sternum. This forms the sternoclavicular joint, which is the only bony articulation between the pectoral girdle of the upper limb and the axial skeleton. This joint allows considerable mobility, enabling the clavicle and scapula to move upward and downward and anteriorly and posteriorly during shoulder movements. The lateral or acromial end of the clavicle articulates with the acromion process of the scapula. This is the portion of the scapula that forms the bony tip of the shoulder. The scapula plays an important role in anchoring the upper limb to the body. The scapula has several important landmarks. The three margins or borders of the scapula are named for their positions within the body. These are the superior border of the scapula, the medial border of the scapula, and the lateral border of the scapula. The suprascapular notch is located lateral to the midpoint of the superior border. The corners of the triangular scapula at either end of the medial border are the superior angle of the scapula and the inferior angle of the scapula. The inferior angle of the scapula is the most inferior portion of the scapula and is particularly important because it serves as attachment points for several powerful muscles involved in shoulder and upper limb movements. The remaining corner of the scapula between the superior and lateral borders is the location of the glenoid cavity or glenoid fossa. This shallow depression articulates with the humerus bone of the arm to form the glenohumeral joint. The small bony bumps located immediately above and below the glenoid cavity are the supraglenoid tubercle and the infraglenoid tubercle. These provide attachments for the muscles of the arm. The scapula also has two prominent projections. One is the hook-like coracoid process. At the shoulder joint, the coracoid process is located inferior to the lateral end of the clavicle. It is anchored to the clavicle by a strong ligament and serves as attachment sites for muscles of the anterior chest and arm. On the posterior aspect, the spine of the scapula is a long prominent ridge that runs across the upper portion. Extending laterally from the spine is a flattened and expanded region called the acromial process. The acromion or acromial process forms the bony tip of the superior shoulder region and articulates with the lateral end of the clavicle forming acromioclavicular joint. Together, the clavicle, acromion, and spine of the scapula form a V-shaped bony line that provides attachment sites for the neck and back muscles acting on the shoulder, as well as muscles that pass across the shoulder joint and act on the arm. The scapula has three depressions, each of which is called a fossa. Two of these are found on the posterior scapula, above and below the scapular spine. 
Superior to the spine is the narrow supraspinous fossa, and inferior to the spine is the broad infraspinous fossa. The deep anterior surface of the scapula forms the broad subscapular fossa. All of these fossae provide large surface areas for the attachment of muscles that cross the shoulder joint and act on the humerus. Thank you for watching.